Big Dinka followed by Little Dinka. Li Mian had just traveled and became a son. In law of the Daju dynasty, Emperor Jiajin of the current dynasty enjoyed alchemy in seeking enlightenment, and there were eight tigers in the palace, including Wang Zhen, Lu Jin, and Wei Zhongxian. In the court, the Yan party led by Yan Song, the Donglin party led by Gu Xian, as well as Qin Lu such as Zhang Jiuzheng and Shen Shixing the most calculating spirit in history passed away in one dynasty. Li Mian lived too tiredly as a political broker in her previous life, and in this life, she only wants to live a leisurely life. Emperor Jiajin had no heirs, so he could only have his elder brother and younger brother. My own wife is determined to become an empress. How do you become an empress? Also known as, I'm really just a salted fish, is this son. In law a reincarnation of a calamity, who has a dog head chopping him. Hurry up and chop him off, let him live for another two and a half years, and he will be a rooster in the morning. Keywords of the novel My lady is the empress without a pop-dot-up window, my lady is the empress. Download the full text of, my lady is the empress, and read the latest chapters of, my lady is the empress. Chapter 1 Inducing flowers, warblers and swallows borrow spring to see. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 1 Inducing flowers, warblers, and swallows borrow spring to see, Uncle, I have come to serve you and rest. This is my duty as a housemaid. In the cold winter of the twelfth lunar month, the window frames in the east wing room are tightly closed. It was already the deep winter of countless cold days, but the room was warm as spring. A bean-green glazed porcelain plate was burned with silver shavings and carbon, and next to it stood a beautiful and beautiful maid named Ji Nu. On the screen of the six noble ladies hung a goose-yellow robe, while the Ji Nu only wore a red belly pocket. The lights were dazzling and charming. Li Mian let out a sigh and rubbed her swollen forehead, just trying to understand the current situation. I have clearly sunk into the sea, how come I am still alive? As a political broker, I wander among officials and businessmen all year round. Although it may seem glamorous, in reality, I dance on the tip of a knife, and even a slight mistake can lead to sinking into the sea. The result is still wet shoes. Waking up again, she sat in a wing room with a cardamom girl wearing a double bun in front of her, whispering her bedtime. Li Mian was not sure why the original owner was absent, and how she was. Li Daitao became stiff and asked, My wife, is she still dealing with guests in the front yard? In the wing room, it was still warm and not scorching summer. Jinu was only wearing a red belly pocket, his body gradually getting cold, and his fingers were pinching the corners of his dirty clothes, curling up slightly. Jinu gently moved his feet and approached the silver shavings and carbon in the bean green glazed porcelain plate. His body gradually warmed up and he said in a daze, Did uncle forget? Oh, I almost forgot that uncle had fainted on the spot since we worshipped the hen, and it was still me and a few maids who carried him into the side room. To pay respects to the hen. The children of officials and eunuchs fell seriously ill and couldn't get up in bed. Instead, there is a custom of women and roosters worshipping the hall to celebrate and try to get rid of the incurable illness, in order to achieve the goal of recovery. Li Mian had a preliminary understanding of her own situation, and it seemed that she was a poor scholar used to please, while the other party was an official lady. Ache. The Jinu suddenly sneezed and couldn't resist the chill of the winter night. He curled up and crouched on the carpet laid on the ground, becoming even more lovable. Li Mian casually picked up the dragon and phoenix auspicious brocade bedding beside her, walked over and wrapped it around Jinu's body. Amidst her screams, she picked it up with her waist and walked towards the bed. Oh my, I forgot to prepare a white cloth. What if I'm pregnant? Jinu had a silly and cute expression on her face, and her mind began to wander, just as she was thinking about whether to drink red soup tomorrow. Li Mian threw her directly onto the bed, turned around and sat on the Huali official hat chair, continuing to ask, how is madam's condition? What kind of serious illness is she suffering from? 
Ji Nu became even more confused. She couldn't understand what Li Mian was saying, but after falling into a coma once, she couldn't help feeling even more confused than her. Uncle, you're sleeping like a fool. Or reading like a fool. I heard that uncle is the only humble Jia Yuan Gong in the past year's rural examination, so he should be very intelligent. The first place in the township examination to solve the problem. Upon learning that she was a Duke of Jia Yuan, Li Mian was noticeably stunned and arranged for a Duke of Jia Yuan to congratulate her daughter. It seemed that the lady's family was a high dot ranking official in the imperial court. It's no wonder the original owner lost his life like a horse caught in a gust of wind. He learned about Yuan Gong from a humble cloth high school, but in the end, he was overjoyed by the powerful lady. How could the extremely ambitious nobleman accept this and die on the spot of Shaodinka? Li Mian smiled openly and was quite calm about this matter. He had lived too tired in his previous life, but being able to live easily in this life can also be considered as God's compensation for himself. The Ji Nu wrapped himself tightly in the dragon and phoenix Cheng Xiang brocade bedding, revealing only a satisfied smile on his face with a double bun head, and his eyes curved into crescents. Her body was warm and her spirit was visibly excited. Uncle can't call the princess a lady. Even if he becomes a relative, uncle still needs to call her a princess. There are many rules in the royal family. When I first entered the mansion, I didn't understand many things and was scolded by the old female officials. Li Mian listened to the chatter of Jinu pouring beans from the bamboo tube and kept talking incessantly, feeling a little surprised in her heart. My own wife is actually a princess, so I am a son. In law. Unfortunately, the princess was seriously ill and unable to fulfill her duties. She dispatched a maid to fulfill her duties on her behalf. Jinu saw that there was no room for her uncle to speak, but her chattering voice was all there was. She spat out her sweet tongue and blushed, saying, Uncle, don't be angry. The princess can't blame her for pretending to be sick and not forming a relationship with him. It's all just the emperor's random arrangement to marry the princess to a man she has never met before. The princess is furious and is currently angry with the emperor. The Jinu angrily helped the princess say a lot of words to defend herself, hoping that her uncle would feel better. The princess didn't come because of him, but because she was angry with the emperor. Thinking of the fairy fighting and the little ghost being caught in the middle and suffering, she suddenly felt that her uncle was so pitiful. Through the narration of Jinu, Li Mian gained a general understanding of the current situation. He was the top scorer in the provincial examination, Jia Yuan, from a humble background. He was granted a marriage by the emperor and married a princess in the palace. The princess was angry and didn't go to get married, let alone think of making a house. She sent her personal maid to become a housemaid. I have figured out my identity, but I still have two dark eyes about this world. I don't know which dynasty and which emperor is in charge of politics. Hope is a prosperous era. Li Mian picked up the pine flower glazed teapot at hand, poured a cup of clear tea, and handed it to Ji Nu, who had been talking for a while. Ji Nu said a lot of words, and the warm silver charcoal was burning in the wing room. He was already thirsty and reached out to take it, revealing his slender and smooth arms. Li Mian waited for Xiao Jinu to finish his tea, picked up the goose yellow silk dress hanging on the six screens of the ladies, and handed it to Jinu. Go to the study to find the history books of the previous dynasty, as well as the latest palace newspaper. The historical records of the previous dynasty can reveal the current dynasty, making the use of the palace newspaper even more significant. The palace newspaper is used to convey political information to local officials, to understand the emperor's reign title, as well as recent major changes, and to understand the current situation of the world. When Jinu was just talking about going through the room, he didn't feel much shy. Suddenly, he wanted to change into a jacket in front of Li Mian, his face red and hot, and he hurriedly put on a goose yellow jacket. I put on another silk jacket outside and pushed open the wooden door of the wing. Call out. The cold wind blew in, 
mixed with large snowflakes. The cold wind blows across the face, invigorating people's spirits. Li Mian only then noticed the heavy snowfall outside. Just as he was about to open his mouth and let Jinu put on his round-necked robe, Jinu's figure disappeared into the rain eaves corridor. When Jinu brought in the history books and palace newspapers, Li Mian found familiar and unfamiliar names between the lines, but it made him even more confused about the history of this dynasty. Jiazhen, the reign title of the current emperor, was also an emperor who enjoyed alchemy in seeking enlightenment, similar to an emperor of the Ming dynasty. However, this dynasty was not the Ming dynasty, but a dynasty called the Zhu dynasty. The familiar celebrities he saw underwent some changes since the Song dynasty. The donkey cart of the Gaoyang River chariot god failed to drift successfully, overturned, and was smashed to death on the spot. After the nine sisters Wan Yan Go killed Yu Wumu, she unexpectedly became a eunuch. After the Song and Yuan dynasties, there was the Zhu dynasty. The current emperor is not the cousin of the late emperor, but the eldest son of the late emperor Wuzong, who inherited the throne through his elder brother and younger brother. According to the historical context, Emperor Wuzong had no sons, but now it is the current emperor Jiazhen who has no sons and has given birth to several daughters. The Princess Changping whom I am marrying today is the illegitimate eldest daughter. Due to the Empress's inability to produce offspring, she was deposed, and the legitimate eldest daughter became the illegitimate eldest daughter. I have appointed Empress Chen Guifei as the new Empress. Upon seeing this, Li Mian's familiar history became unfamiliar, but she no longer had the idea of acting as a broker to participate in it. Nowadays, I just want to live a relaxed and low dot key life. He closed the book in his hand, undressed, and lay in the warm brocade bedding of dragon and phoenix, falling into a deep sleep. On the west side of the wing, there is also a small cabin. Separated from the wing by a mahogany lattice, there lived close maids who took care of their daily lives. Jinu sat next to the mahogany incense table, holding his face in both hands, staring blankly as his uncle gradually fell asleep. He got up and went to the next room. Brothers, please follow up on new books. Without following up, it's easy to die. Please. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Golden River Map You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Golden River Map The spring is cold and chilly, the winter wind howls, the square window of the willow lattice trembles from time to time, and the golden rooster in the backyard makes a loud sound of dawn. The sky was hazy, and the Jinu got up from the warm Xiang embroidered silk quilt. Wearing embroidered shoes, she sat in front of the small chef's several grid dowry, briefly tidying up her double ring bun, and turned around to go out. Coming out of the circular arch partition. She poked her head out in a double bun and saw her uncle still sleeping on the bed, breathed a sigh of relief. Jinu lightly opened the wooden door of the eastern room, followed the courtyard corridor, and went to the stove to fetch half a copper basin of hot water. Jiya! Jinu panted and walked into the eastern room, exhaling white air. He placed the copper basin on the five-legged round carved face basin rack and went to fetch the Songjiang purple cloth face scarf. Busy, walking in and out. By the time Jinu finished all this work, he was already sweating profusely. I'll do it myself. Li Mian lifted the brocade bedding of Longfeng Qingxiang and sat by the bed. Seeing that she was exhausted, she couldn't bear to let her serve her again and put on robes and boots. She looked at her small face and pouted. Li Mian didn't say much anymore, but complied with Jinu's wishes and allowed her to squat by the bed, serving her as she put on her black boots and a round-necked robe. After having breakfast, Li Mian glanced at the lackluster Jinu who was trapped in the side room and suggested, as a son dot in dot law, you should be able to leave the mansion at any time. The Jinu chick nodded incessantly like pecking rice and ran out in joy, I'll go to the stable and prepare a sedan chair for my uncle. Li Mian did not refuse, everything seemed novel, and he wanted to try what it felt like to sit in the official sedan chair. He walked out of the mansion along the courtyard corridor. 
Outside the white wall of the east gate, there is a curtain sedan parked. The whole body is made of silk fabric, with small windows on each side. Through the rolling shutter, one can see the surrounding streets and alleys. For sedan bearers wearing wide-edged deep nets, blue cloth shirts and pants, with a long blue cloth handkerchief draped over their shoulders, stood on the side waiting. Li Mian sat in a sedan chair, covering the cold air of several cold days. He had a hollow copper stove in a sealed jar by his hand, with silver shavings and carbon placed in advance, holding it warm in his hand. The sedan chair is relatively spacious, and one person can still sit in it. Let's sit together in the sedan chair. The cold was pressing, and the little face of the Jinu turned red with cold. Li Mian lifted the rolling shutter and greeted her. The Ji Nu's double ring bun shook like a tambourine, refusing to say, I don't have any achievements or fame, how can I sit in a sedan chair? If the steward finds out, I will be scolded again. Li Mian remembered that there were various rules and regulations in this world, and no longer insisted. He instructed, I heard that the Jinshui River is the busiest place in the capital. Let's go to the bank of the Jinshui River. The sedan bearers received Li Mian's instructions and immediately carried their sedan chairs towards the Jinshui River. On the way, everything was smooth and steady, without any shaking for Li Mian. Jinu followed by the rolling shutter, chattering about interesting stories in the capital. The main reason is which candy shops preserves are delicious, and which small stalls food is delicious. High-quality mulberry paper costs only two coins and one knife. The purple cloth from Songjiang Prefecture is of genuine value and is fair to all. The wooling class is singing the Yuyao tune at Jinshui River tonight, you can't miss it. The bustling scene of Guizhi City, Deshan Qinggong, Yenji Shop, and Zhuzhong Factory, like the Qingming Riverside scene, was truly presented in front of Li Mian. It's lively and bustling, especially interesting. Stop here. Li Mian saw Jinu's eyes fixed on the nearby silver ingot bridge stall, smiled, and ordered the sedan bearers to stop. Rest here and have a bowl by the way. Li Mingang wanted to say he had a bowl of noodle tea, but he was shy and didn't bring any money out. He doesn't have any silver either. Jinu immediately took out a penny of silver from the Xiang embroidery purse and handed it to the sedan chair driver, saying, This is the reward my uncle has given you. The sedan bearers were flattered and quickly thanked the Sun in Dot Law for his favor, respectfully waiting for Li Mian to leave. Only then did they dare to look directly at the uncle in the mansion and curiously scrutinize him. The Sun in Dot Law is kind. Hearted. We have received the monthly payment. Is it our duty to carry the sedan chair, or is it our first time receiving the reward? I heard that my uncle also comes from a poor family, and his fortune is really good. He married a princess from the mansion. Brother Zhao, please keep your mouth shut. The word uncle is not something that outsiders like us can call. Only the person brought by the princess from the palace can call close uncle. Dot. The sedan chair driver surname Xiao closed his mouth in frustration and followed the other three sedan chair drivers to the noodle tea shop to drink a bowl of steaming and full noodle tea. Li Mian brought the Ji Nu to the small stall next to the silver ingot bridge, and surprisingly, it was a cold selling stall. Cold taba is usually placed during the scorching summer season, as a rare way to cool down and eat. It is now the twelfth month of winter, and the cold food stall clearly goes against the season. Normally, no one will come to eat it. At this time, there are two elderly people sitting by the Jinshui River, holding blue and white glazed porcelain bowls, eating cold food. Li Mian and Ji Nu ordered two bowls of cold taba and sat on a small stool by the river, gazing at the picturesque Jinshui River and eating cold taba. After just taking a bite, Li Mian understood why the cold food stall still had business in winter. The cold panning method is very unique. Picking the tender buds of locust trees, mashing them with juice, and adding flour to make cold panning. It is tender, fragrant, and delicious, with a lingering aftertaste that produces saliva. 
The two elders glanced at Li Mian and Ji Nu, and saw that they were strangers. They didn't pay attention and continued to look at the Jinshui River to criticize current affairs. The words spoken were easy to understand, more like two storytellers talking. Paired with cold snacks, it is obviously a great accompaniment and doesn't cost a penny. Not spending money is always good. There is no noble son in a humble family. Ah, even the eldest son of a Langzhong family in the Ministry of Rights dared to speak such shameless words, which caused public resentment and almost destroyed the foundation of the imperial examination system. Sun Langzhong was fortunate that he was still a member of the Ministry of Rights Langzhong. He devoted a lot of effort to cultivating his eldest son and producing a mediocre person. If it weren't for His Majesty's appointment of Li Mian, who was at the end of the current provincial examination, as the Jia Yuan and asking him to marry a princess, I don't know how many troubles would have arisen. Li Mian, who won the imperial examination today. Li Mian put down the blue and white glazed porcelain bowl and said it should be him. He listened carefully and understood the background of marrying the princess. No wonder Princess Changping is angry with His Majesty. It turned out that she was treated as a peace princess to quell public grievances, but anyone would inevitably be filled with resentment. Li Mian ignored these troublesome matters and instructed Ji Nu to pay five cents of silver. The two of them left the cold washing stall and continued to wander by the Jinshui River. He followed Ji Nu behind him, walking aimlessly along the banks of the Jinshui River. When they were tired, they would casually find a stall to rest and taste various foods in the capital. It's not really delicious, Li Mian just enjoys the leisurely moment and doesn't have to spend money on it. But every time the pheasant slave eats, his cheeks bulge and his eyes bend into crescents. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Careless Willow Insertion You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Careless Willow Insertion When the winter snow began to melt, the flying snow gradually stopped, and the roof figures on the roof of the glazed tile became little snowmen, which were very cute. Li Mian has returned to this world from the cold winter of the twelfth lunar month to the season of winter snow melting. He stood in front of the window lattice, and outside the window were several waxberries. In the morning, a few bloomed, with a refreshing fragrance that was refreshing. Unfortunately, there is no sound of silk and bamboo on the strings of sheng, shao, and wind. Li Mian put down the lacquer broom in her hand and finished today's calligraphy. Ji Nu sat on the porcelain pier with his small face on his side, his gaze fixed on the lacquer brush. It's so strange for uncle to practice calligraphy. Everyone else uses a round-headed fine-haired brush, and I've never seen anyone use uncle's flat-headed brush. It's so interesting. She spoke strangely, but felt that the handwriting written by her uncle was quite beautiful. The strokes were only folded but not turned, very similar to the font of a steel, with a touch of gold and stone charm. The game is over, and Zaya Zinu finds it interesting. He has already practiced the word half done. Dot. Li Mian's practice of calligraphy was just that he found this type of font quite interesting. He casually threw the dried wax paper and rice paper in front of the window lattice, walked out of the study, and headed towards the bustling Jinshui River. On the banks of the Jinshui River, there are numerous boats and courtyards. The students who went on a study tour with negative academic records came to the capital and sat in the tea room of the corridor courtyard, asking for a pot of mulberry and chrysanthemum tea. They just sat quietly by the window and watched, and this tireless study tour was not in vain. I leisurely strolled around for a few days. Jinu suddenly sat in the second room with a worried expression on his face, unwilling to come out. He took out his favorite preserved fruit from his embroidered bag and ate it haphazardly. Drowsy, with a drooping cerebellar pouch. Li Mian watched this scene quite interestingly, rarely seeing the appearance of the Jinu. What are the days of the month that come? White sugar is hard to find, but brown sugar is abundant. Li Mian carried a pine flower glazed teapot to the stove, brewed a pot of brown sugar tea, and brought it to her. But through the hollow mahogany lattice partition, 
one could see a pile of account books placed on the small kitchen's several grid dowry. Jinu opened a roll of account books and complained, a thick one. After settling these accounts, my eyes will be blinded. I can't accompany my uncle these days. Why don't you ask Hong Chiao to go out together? Hong Chiao has more accounts in his hands than I do. One or two silver coins can be exchanged for 1,000 won pi coins or 700 won huang coins. Silver is durable and won't cost over a hundred tails of silver for a meal. The shop assistants in the capital only earn a few silver coins per month. During this period, their expenses have not exceeded ten tails of silver, how could there be a pile of accounts? Li Mian picked up a roll of account books, opened them twice, and wrote the amount of 121 satin and horses stored in the internal transportation warehouse, 164 gold and silver, and so on. Li Mian understood, but it became even more strange. These account books record the accounts of the ten internal treasury in the palace, which belong to the palace treasury and should be managed by eunuchs. How did they fall into the hands of the Jinu? The Jinu complained bitterly on his mouth, and his movements were not slow, carefully recording the accounts. She was a restless person, and after writing for only two pages, she began to complain incessantly. Uncle is a Jia Yuan Gong, full of knowledge. Do you have an accounting method that can settle accounts in an instant? The accounting method taught by the princess to the servant is so troublesome. Instantly settled. This is no different from sleeping with a book under your head, trying to memorize all the knowledge in an instant when you wake up. It's all just a beautiful dream. Li Mian had a heart to help her and opened a book to check various amounts. Fortunately, the four-pillar accounting method is only used to settle accounts on the surface. If it were to be replaced with the three-legged accounts used by the county to control the local area, he would be blind. The three-legged ledger consists of three books. The draft ledger, the current ledger, and the basic ledger, as well as various hidden words that are difficult for others to understand except for county officials in each county. The four-pillar accounting method is much simpler, with only four numbers. Old management, new collection, dismissal, and visible items. Just calculate the old management and new collection, and determine the termination and appointment. Li Mian flipped through several books and found that all of them were tedious and cumbersome records of an event. It seemed that someone was troubling the Jinu, or more precisely, Princess Changping. Various troublesome and troublesome things immediately appeared in my mind, wandering among them as intermediaries, profiting enough money. Ha, Li Mian laughed dumbfounded, shook her head, and then had the habitual thoughts of a broker. She quickly extinguished these miscellaneous thoughts and only wanted to help her record her account book and go out for a stroll. You can use the double-entry bookkeeping method, which is also known as the Longmen bookkeeping method, to write in the old management and pay in the new collection. Longmen accounting method Jinu looked at Li Mian with a confused expression on his face, not understanding what this accounting method meant. He bit on the pen and listened to his uncle's explanation. Li Mian took out a piece of official blue paper, picked up the lake pen, and dropped it on both sides of the paper. On the left side, the internal carrier warehouse is written, and on the right side, gold and silver are written. Li Mian sorted out the wording and tried to put it plainly. The gold, silver, and gold transported by the transport yamen to the internal transport warehouse are recorded as one entry. The various expenses provided by the internal transport warehouse to the palace are recorded as one payment. In short, the balance between entry and payment should be balanced to balance the remaining inventory and the corresponding amount. It was easy to understand and I personally settled it once again. The more Ji Nu listened, the brighter his eyes became. The headache-stricken ledger became simple and clear. Xiaomian regained her radiance and used the Longman accounting method to settle the cumbersome accounts, feeling full of energy. The Ji Nu buried his head in writing and scratching, and his head swayed back and forth in a double bun. The green steps shake the beads, shaking non dot stop. A whole pile of account books, settled through the Longman accounting method. 
it turned into concise pages of paper. The time taken is even shorter, it usually takes a few days to settle. It only took a while now. Jinu held several official blue papers in her tender little hands, stunned, and soon cheered again. Uncle has a lot of ink in his stomach, unlike a servant who only has a belly full of candied fruits. The annoying account book has become a few simple sheets of paper. The servant then taught the princess about my uncle's talent. Li Mian reached out and grabbed Jinu's goose yellow skirt, gently shaking her head. It's not a big deal. You just need to know it yourself, don't spread it out. Also, think about it. If you know that it only takes a while to settle the accounts, more accounts will be sent next time, but you still don't have time to go out. Jinu was caught in a dilemma, wanting to follow his uncle out and also wanting to tell the princess the long men accounting method, which left him in a dilemma. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Long Men Accounting Method You are listening at NovelFull.audio The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 5 Riding Donkey Girl You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Riding Donkey Girl Daily Breakfast is held in the hall between the western branches, but due to the lack of window frames in winter, the area between the branches appears slightly dim. A white glazed high-footed lamp was lit on the nearby rosewood incense table, illuminating the Rui round table of Xiangnan. Four dishes were placed, including winter mustard, lamb soup, shrimp fish, and green cake. Li Mian sat on the pear drum stool, his chopsticks constantly reaching towards the sky-blue glazed algae dish containing shrimp and fish. This is a river delicacy produced in Suzhou Prefecture, which has fish roe since birth and tastes especially delicious. Ji Nu stood aside to serve, staring at the shrimp and fish, and his small mouth kept swallowing saliva. She had already had breakfast, and as one of the few first dot class maids in the mansion, she enjoyed a large bowl of lamb soup. Lamb is a high dot quality meat that only wealthy families can afford. The first dot class maid in the mansion can have a bowl of lamb soup in the morning, which is a rare grace. Li Mian saw her look funny and asked, I can't finish the shrimp and fish in the seaweed dish. Come and help me take a few bites, it's a pity to throw them away. Princess Changping is different from the extravagant princesses of the feudal lords in the capital. She advocates frugality and tries to simplify her breakfast, with only four dishes. However, she cannot break the rules of etiquette and can only dispose of any leftover food. The only difference is that the princesses of the feudal lords poured directly into the swill bucket, while Princess Changping distributed the remaining daily meals in the mansion to the poor people in the almanac. Ji Nu shook his double bun, still refusing to say, I can't eat with my uncle at the same table. Uncle quickly finished his meal. The servants in the stable have already led the best horses in the mansion to the schoolyard. The mansion is a five-courtyard mansion, adjacent to the backyard of Shikahai. To the west of the corridor courtyard is the western garden Chiyuan, which is filled with water and soil, and to the east is a school field. Li Mian's biggest hobbies in the past were two. Horseback riding and archery, with the aim of easing his tense emotions as a broker, and to get close to certain high dot ranking officials and businessmen. Archery is better, and most people can afford it. Riding horses is different. Without a rich family background, one cannot afford to raise expensive horses. Li Mian couldn't sit still anymore and immediately stood up from the pear drum stool. She stood up and walked outside, saying, I heard that the best horses in the mansion are all sweaty BMWs. Are you serious? Sweaty BMW has always been his coveted treasure, and ever since he was fortunate enough to meet it, he has been longing for it, almost becoming an obsession. I didn't expect to have a sweaty BMW one day. Ji Nu had never seen Li Mian, who was leisurely and calm before. He had a strong interest in something and chased after him in a goose yellow robe. Uncle, please walk slowly, wait for the servant, he said following the corridor, I chased towards the schoolyard. The courtyard in the mansion was deep, and after running for a long time, I was already sweating profusely. 
The Ji Nu breathed white air and looked at Li Mian riding on a black steed, stunned and adorable. Li Mian, a weak scholar, skillfully rode a black steed and galloped freely on the school field. Her clothes were rolled up, her face was handsome, and her whole body exuded an inexplicable attraction. Jinu smiled and bent his eyes, feeling that his uncle was even more delicious than candied fruits. Embroidered attic, the willow pane is tightly closed all year round. At some point, a narrow crack opened, through which one can clearly see the situation in the schoolyard below. Until Li Mian rode a black steed and rushed out of the back door of the schoolyard, the wicker window slowly closed. It seems like it hasn't been turned on before. The cold wind was blowing, and Li Mian galloped along the Jinshui River. Fortunately, this section of the Jinshui River was sparsely populated in the early morning, so there was no need to worry about hitting people. The riverside road is wide, and the courtyard house is slightly far from the Jinshui River, but it also attracts the crowing of chickens and barking of dogs along the way. There are also some young men who wake up early to practice piano standing on the painted boat and exclaiming in surprise. Which family's young master doesn't sleep under warm blankets in the winter, like these hard-working women, gets up early in the morning. As for the sweat and blood BMW's divine steeds, the Qing officials cannot see them. They are not border generals, how can they see the difference between good horses and better horses, only thinking they are the young masters of a wealthy family? If it were a Guqin and Pipa, one could distinguish the price of silver. As the speed of the black steed grew faster and faster, the cold wind made Li Mian unable to open her eyes and lose control of the reins. She understood in her heart that the fierce horse had developed a temper. Li Mian could only hold his breath and try to stick to the back of the horse, blocking the piercing cold wind. As long as he survived this battle, Wu Mingji would comply. Donkey, 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 in the early morning, the sound of reciting poetry appeared on the banks of the Jinshui River, but it was not Luo Binwang's geese, 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 but rather strange, donkeys, donkeys, donkeys. Never before has such a strange poem been written, yet it still has a soft and pleasant female voice. A woman with a cloth skirt and a wooden hairpin was riding a small donkey, blocking in front of her. She was holding a steamed cake in her hand, eating it in small bites, and rushed to the area around the silver ingot bridge. The little donkey walked very slowly, occasionally kicking and stopping. With a few us, she refused to leave. The woman with a cloth skirt and wooden hairpin hurriedly spun around and could only use a soft and sticky voice to let it continue walking. The little donkey refused to leave, and Wu Mingji chased after him with a gust of wind, almost colliding with the little donkey. Get out of the way! Li Mian shouted loudly, but due to the rapid wind brought by Wu Mingji, the sound reached the ears of the woman with a cloth skirt and wooden hairpin, becoming intermittent and unable to hear what was being said. The woman with a cloth skirt and a wooden hairpin held a steamed cake and looked back, instantly widening her beautiful autumn water eyes. Ah! Ah! As two screams of surprise sounded simultaneously, the woman with a cloth skirt and wooden hairpin fell off a small donkey, and the steamed cake in her hand flew somewhere. The woman with a cloth skirt and wooden hairpin sat on the ground in a daze, her buttocks burning with pain. However, she ignored the pain and coughed violently while holding on to her white and thin neck. Li Mian exclaimed in surprise, saw the divine steed of Wu Mingji, and leapt directly over the head of the woman with a cloth skirt and wooden hairpin. She was truly impressed that it was a precious horse that could leap several meters. She quickly used her strength to stop Wu Mingji, got off her horse, and walked back. Wu Mingji had no one on his back, and he performed another wise trick for Li Mian, running back alone towards the direction of the mansion. Li Mian didn't care about it, he couldn't lose it. Not to mention that there are not many horses in the capital that can catch up with the Wu Mingji, let alone anyone who dares to steal the sweat BMW. Such a divine BMW is recorded in the Taipu Temple. Whoever dares to steal the Wu Mingji will be arrested by the Yaman that night. 
When Li Mian returned to the woman with a cloth skirt and wooden hairpin, she saw her face turn blue and she was holding her neck, unable to catch her breath. Her heart tightened and she knew she had been choked. Li Mian didn't care about the difference between men and women, so she hugged the woman with a cloth skirt and wooden hairpin from behind, held her hands under her chest, and exerted force upwards. Thorny A faint mist rose from the banks of the Jinshui River, and suddenly a sound of clothes tearing rang out. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Riverside Scenery You are listening at NovelFull.audio The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 7 Burying a Seed You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Burying a Seed Li Mian searched for the feeling of archery, held the magpie-drawn bow and placed it back on the Zhu Qi Lan Qi. She left along the corridor and went to the mixed hall to bathe and change clothes. Riding a horse is a strenuous task, while Wu Ming Ji is still a sweaty BMW. His inner gush shirt is covered in a layer of fine sweat, so he changed to a round-necked gush shirt to avoid getting infected with wind and cold. People in the capital usually go to the Wontang to take a bath and pay silver. Anyone can take a bath in the Wontang, and Li Mian does not need to go to the outside Wontang. There is a mixed hall dedicated to bathing in the mansion. Li Mian changed into a fragrant round-necked robe and had dinner in the cafeteria. She was nestled in the east wing and refused to come out. It was not that she was greedy. In the wing, there were bean green glazed porcelain plates burning with silver shavings and carbon, warm as spring, sitting in front of the window lattice, writing and scratching. The lake brush in his hand is not a flat-headed brush used for practicing calligraphy, but a fine-haired brush that draws a pattern on a piece of official blue paper. I have been drawing for several days in a row, and the strange patterns in the drawings have been collected. Go find the craftsmen from Laifu and create them according to the design. Li Mian stretched lazily and handed the design in his hand to the Jinu sitting beside him, holding his face. He repeatedly instructed, the dimensions have been specified, so the craftsmen should be careful and not make any mistakes. Jinu took over the design and looked it upside down, flipping it over and over. He couldn't understand what the official blue paper was drawing. It is quite similar to a bow and crossbow, and has small wheels like a wheel hub. The material also includes large horns, which is very strange. Wait until the craftsmen in the mansion create the items in the design, put them in lychee wooden boxes, and send them over to see the strange things clearly. It's like a magpie drawing a bow, but it's much more complex than a magpie drawing a bow. Li Mian tried the large bow in her hand, and the force required to pull the bowstring was much easier than that of a magpie drawing bow. She was satisfied and said, with this composite bow, practicing archery and horseback riding will save a lot of effort in the future. More importantly, the range is long. Today, the large bow in the military has a range of about 200 steps, but the composite bow in my hand can reach nearly 500 steps. It seems that using cow horns instead of some materials has played a role. Li Mian put away his bull horn and big bow, and then went to the school field to pull out the wooming Ji. He continued to tame this sweaty BMW and spent two and a half days making it obedient. Every morning on the banks of the Jinshui River, there is a young man in a robe who rides a horse and shoots arrows. Even the arrows shot on the tree trunk are not picked up, and ordinary people passing by at noon are allowed to pick them up and exchange for some silver coins. Riding horses, shooting arrows, teasing the pheasant slaves. Life was quite leisurely, but since we parted ways that day, we have never seen a woman with a beautiful peony scene again. Looking at the willows at 49, the snow in the corridor courtyard has melted, and the gloomy sky rarely reveals warm sunshine. The weather is great. Li Mian rolled up the cuffs of her round-necked robe and used a medicine hoe to dig up the xian chow in front of the window lattice in the east wing room. She placed it in a nearby blue kiln transformed flower pot, waiting to be transplanted to the Shichi garden in the mansion. Jinu took off his silk jacket and stood aside in a goose yellow jacket, 
holding a loquat sapling in his hand. He chattered incessantly, the princess used to love eating loquats, saying they were cold fruits. When several close maids, including myself and sister Hong Chiao, were female officials, she also loved eating loquats, especially the famous variety of Hui Chang's flat-headed red robe, which was large and had sweet orange-red flesh. I could eat a large plate at a time. During the cold winter of the twelfth lunar month, loquat flowers bloom in the cold, white as jade, and the corridor courtyard is filled with a refreshing fragrance. It is the elegant loquat xiaotsue. Li Mian's mind habitually pondered a person's personality based on their preferences. Princess Changping did not have any extravagance like that of a feudal princess, and everything in the mansion advocated frugality. She also loved to eat bitter and cold blooming loquats, indicating that Princess Changping had a great ambition. The broker's thoughts instinctively popped out of his mind, shook his head, and then drove them out of his mind. Li Mian took over the loquat sapling and looked at the greedy pheasant slave, saying a few more words. The loquat sapling sent by eunuch Ma Yun of the middle commissioner's office is a precious tree species gem from Tangchi. The winter wind suddenly blew from Shikahai, with a hint of dampness and coldness, even if there was warm sunshine on the sun, it felt slightly cold on the body. Normally, Jinu had been hiding behind the white wall arches, only revealing his small head with a double bun and protruding out of the white wall arches. But now he didn't dodge. When Jinu heard the name of Bao Zhu, his little face was filled with a surprised expression, and his white and tender hands held on to the loquat seedlings, refusing to let go. Carefully support the loquat saplings placed in the soil pit, without any relaxation. I'm afraid that the loquat seedlings may grow crooked when filling the soil, and the loquat fruits will not be sweet anymore. Li Mian shook her head gently, revealing a smile. She felt that her appearance was really interesting, much more interesting than planting loquat trees on warm days. From now on, we need to take good care of the loquat seedlings. If they grow crooked, they won't bear fruit. This is teasing the Jinu. No matter how crooked the loquat grows, as long as its roots are rooted in the soil, it will always grow fresh and delicious fruits. The Ji Nu was frightened, and his white and tender hands supporting the loquat seedlings worked even harder. His body was gradually getting cold from the winter wind, and he shrank his head in a bun, still unwilling to let go. Li Mian saw her adorable appearance and took the silk jacket from the corridor railing, putting it on the body of the Ji Nu. It's not yet spring, so you can't take off the silk jacket to avoid getting infected with wind and cold. As the saying goes, getting sick is like drawing silk, and you can't go out for at least half a month. The Jinu put on a warm silk jacket and was basking in the warm sun, squinting her eyes comfortably. Upon hearing his uncle say that he couldn't go out for half a month, Jinu quickly released one hand, fastened the buckle, and muttered, It's all because of Lu Jin, this dog servant. He used to eat Tangchi loquats from Hangzhou Prefecture every year. Since Sheng Guifei became the empress, she has been using various excuses to evade it. There isn't enough transport ships to transport tribute fruit loquats from Hangzhou Prefecture. Li Mian was not surprised by the behavior of Lu Jin, one of the eight tigers in the palace. It was just a cold tea. The Empress has already been replaced by Empress Sheng, and Lu Jin, as the eunuch of the transportation system, will have to flatter someone else. Besides, when the palace was vying for favor, the Empress Dowager and Empress Sheng have been at odds. Lu Jin deliberately made things difficult for the eldest daughter of the deposed Empress, who is now Princess Changping of the illegitimate eldest daughter, which is a reasonable thing. When Li Mian saw her mention of Tangchi loquats, she looked envious and gave her an idea. When Ma Yun, the great companion of the mansion, went out to Beijing to purchase, he wanted to buy Tangchi loquats. Just find a different way. What's the solution? Uncle, hurry up and say it, exclaimed the pheasant slave with excitement Li Mian didn't know if she could understand, so she casually chatted and said, abandon the canal and turn it into the sea. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Conversations You are listening at novelfull.audio 
Chapter 8 Conversations Jinu was confused and couldn't understand the meaning of uncle's words. It was easy to understand that the abandoned canal was not transported by the waterway, but only by using a canal boat could more goods be transported, and the speed was also fast. If it were for mules and horses, I don't know where to go. The livestock consume a lot of horse feed, and before the loquats are transported to the capital, they might be eaten up by the livestock. Change the sea. The transport ships have always been traveling on the Tsaoha River, and I have never heard of the Municipal Shipping Bureau passing through Tianjin Sanwei. Moreover, the Municipal Shipping Bureau has been abolished for many years. Jinu thought that his great companion Ma Yun could secretly go out to sea and smiled, Uncle still has knowledge. No problem can be difficult for him. He can have loquats to eat next year. Li Mian pointed to the loquat seedlings in front of him, meaning that in a few years, you can still eat loquats without having to go to Tangchi in Hangzhou Prefecture to purchase them. However, it will take several years, not just planting them this year but next year. Everything requires a certain amount of time to settle, just like this loquat seedling takes several years to bear fruit. The master and servant planted the loquat tree, and at noon, they walked out of the mansion and walked along the streets to the bank of the Jinshui River next to the Silver Ingot Bridge. The daily eating habit of officials, gentry, and common people is to have two meals a day. The first meal is called Chaoshir, also known as Zhuo. When the sun comes to the southeast corner, which is the beginning of the fourth lunar month, it is the time for the first meal to be eaten. The second meal is called breastfeeding, also known as dinner, and is served near dusk. Some officials and gentry have three meals a day at home, only having some tea, water, and pastries at noon. Li Mian couldn't adapt to having two meals a day, so she was more accustomed to having three meals a day. As the kitchen in the mansion didn't prepare meals at noon, she often took the pheasant slaves out for dinner. The two of them arrived at the cold Taba stall next to the Silver Ingot Bridge, sat on a small stool, and ate the tender and delicious cold Taba with blue and white glazed porcelain bowls, watching the colorful Jinshui River. I have been watching for many days, but I have never been to the boats and boats on the Jinshui River. I appreciate the charm of Yangzhou's skinny horses, West Lake boatmen, and Datong aunties. Ji Nu patted the Xiang embroidery purse and held it in a double bun, saying, I have saved several tens of tails of silver over the years. If my uncle wants to go to the painting boat and listen to music, there's no need to worry about not having enough silver. Just go ahead and do it. Li Mian was really interesting to see her like this. She reached out and rubbed the face of Jinu like kneading dough, her little mouth leaking, and she couldn't continue speaking. It turned into a whistling sound, making it even more interesting. Uncle, the Jinu was so angry that he didn't want to talk to him anymore. As it was their first skin-to-skin -skin date, he blushed and pretended to look at the two elderly people next to him, turning his red and rosy little face. Li Mian averted her gaze and said, if you want to go to the boat and listen to music, just bring the red bridge and come over together. You don't need to pay for it, it's just that you don't want to go for the time being. The mansion is relatively lenient towards Uncle Li Mian, who can enter and exit the mansion at any time. Most people will go and handle any requests made. It's not a problem just to go on a boat and listen to music. The steward, Lady Hong Chiao, will also voluntarily give money. Li Mian put down the blue and white glazed porcelain bowl in her hand, nodded at the two elderly people, and prepared to leave. Both sides have a special fondness for cold Tao by the Silver Ingot Bridge. After a long time, they have become familiar faces and can be considered nodding acquaintances. Li Mian was still thinking in her mind about what kind of friends they were, not to mention bubble friends. She had never taken a bath in a bathhouse, and even more so, wine friends. Cold selling stalls do not sell alcohol. The only barely justifiable statement is that it should be a foodie who likes to eat the same cold food. The two elderly people showed no airs and nodded kindly, giving Li Mian a response. However, their emotions today were clearly not high, with a hint of melancholy on their faces. 
The old man surnamed Sun used to eat two bowls of cold taba, but after taking two bites today, he couldn't eat it anymore. He sighed and said, during the reign of Emperor Taizo, the grain tax and grain transported to the capital through the canal amounted to 58,544 stones. By the reign of Emperor Xuanzong, it had once reached 674-2854 stones, and now. Sigh. The old man surnamed Yuan also suffered from loss of appetite, and his usual love for cold food also lost his appetite. Sun Gong should have seen the annual records of grain transportation. After Emperor Xuanzong's reign, the amount of grain transported to the capital through grain transportation has been decreasing year by year, and this year, there are only 1.9 million stones of grain transportation, which is truly shocking. Sun Gong put down the blue and white glazed porcelain bowl in his hand. He couldn't eat it anymore, but he didn't waste any thought. He handed it over to a man behind him who looked like an iron tower. Judging from his large arms and round waist, his appetite was not average. The iron tower man took the blue and white glazed porcelain bowl and finished the cold dishes in just a few bites, making people look very appetizing. Sun Gong still had no appetite and said, as Yuan Gong said, the amount of grain transported by water decreased sharply from 674, 2854 stones during the reign of Emperor Xuanzong to 1.9 million stones today. It has accumulated years of corrupt policies and has always been powerless to continue, unable to let the corrupt transportation continue. During this period, Li Mian heard many interesting stories about various rumors in the capital from the two of them. He thought that the two elders were high dot ranking officials and gentry in the capital, and that their nephews and nephews held official positions in the court, so they were more knowledgeable about various news in the court. Upon hearing two elderly people talk about the amount of grain being transported, both inside and outside the words accurately knowing the amount, even to the point of a few stones, the identities of these two elderly people are not simple. Not everyone can see the yellow book of the transportation, Princess Changping still doesn't know. Sun Gong and Yuan Gong talked for a long time, but didn't say a reason. Their interest was low, and the sky became gloomy, as if it was about to snow. Without any conversation, I was ready to get up and leave. Sun Gong glanced at Li Mian, who had left earlier, and casually said, We've known each other for quite some time now. How do you view the corrupt transportation system of the court? Li Mian looks young, but she carries a sense of maturity and composure that has been in the officialdom for many years. At best, she is young and mature, but at worst, she is old. Fashioned. Unfortunately, this weathered and old dot fashioned aura appeared on a young man, which was both unusual and I dot catching. Sun Gong subconsciously regarded him as an official who had retired and returned to his hometown. As soon as he spoke, he burst into laughter. Despite years of accumulated corruption, officials throughout history have been at a loss, and there is no way for a young person to solve it. Li Mian's statement was as Sun Gong had anticipated. It's interesting for me to listen to the discussion between the two of you, young generation. Let me explain, where do we know about water transportation and grain transportation? Ji Nu was confused. In the morning, my uncle even said to abandon the canal and turn it into the sea, but suddenly he didn't understand. She stuffed two candied fruits into her mouth, her cheeks bulging high. She wanted to help Li Mian speak, but couldn't open her mouth. She quickly bit the candied fruits hard. Yuan Gong was somewhat displeased with his words. Seeing that he was dressed as a descendant of officials and gentry, but he was ignorant of transportation, he frowned and said, Every time I come over, I can run into you. Don't just wander around aimlessly all day. Read more classics and histories. If you continue to be so ignorant and inexperienced, sooner or later you will lose all your family business. Without learning or skill. Jinu was no longer willing and said angrily, My uncle is really impressive. He knows astronomy and geography from top to bottom. How could he be ignorant and inexperienced? It's just that the food we brought in is insufficient, and my uncle has already figured out what to do. 
Just abandon the canal and turn it into the sea. End of this chapter. Chapter 9. Circle. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 9 Circle Transforming Abandoned Water Tanks into Sea Areas The four simple words left Sun Gong and Yuan Gong lost in thought, and they sat back on the small stool, looking at the back of the master and made leaving, with a slight change in their eyes. Compared to Jinu Daimang, who believed that the shortage of grain transported was due to the increasing number of merchant ships, the number of ships carried by the waterway could only be reduced, resulting in a decrease in the amount of grain transported. By changing the sea route, the amount of grain transported will increase again. Sun Gong and Yuan Gong were well aware of the drawbacks of the corrupt transportation system, which were caused by fire consumption and deficit. The grain transported from over 6 million koku during the reign of Emperor Xuanzong to only 1.9 million koku during the reign of Emperor Jiazhen. Lending the merchants ten courage, they dare not seize the waterway with the transport ships. Sun Gong was rarely interested in the identity of a young man. Does Yuan Gong know the identity of that young man, the nephew of Zhang Jiuzhen, the grandson of Yen Song, or the disciple of Gu Xiancheng? Yuan Gong shook his head gently and said, at his only weak age, he has such a seasoned insight into the political situation of the court. It could only be a few cabinet assistants or the young masters of the six ministries and the Tang family. Only by being exposed to it from a young age can we say things that make both of us feel thought-provoking. However, during this time, Sun Gong has had a lot of contact, and he also knows that this young friend is indifferent and unlikely to be the younger generation of those who fight in the court. A little friend said it from Yuan Gong's mouth. Several imposing men behind the two looked at Duke Yuan in surprise, not believing that this was something Duke Yuan could say. Sun Gong also glanced at Yuan Gong with a smile on his face, but his heart was tickled. Half of what he said was most annoying. This kid only said four words, not a single word. It's better for the little girl next to him to take care of it. Don't let me run into this kid again. If I don't explain everything clearly, I won't want to leave. Yuan Gong felt the same way inside, the saying abandoning the canal and changing it to the sea, is even more attractive than the silk, bamboo, and pipa of the Qinghu people in Jinshui River. It seems that I won't be able to sleep tonight. On the banks of the Jinshui River, the silk, bamboo, and pipa, accompanied by the round singing voice of the Qing shepherd, curled up and spread. The nearby scholars sitting by the corridor couldn't help but shake their heads and heads, clapping their palms to the beat. Only Sun Gong and Yuan Gong were frowning, and the beautiful little tune lost its flavor. The two of them sat in the same spot, pondering the idea of converting abandoned water into sea, gradually transforming into two mud statues of gods and temples, motionless. Young Master Li Mian followed the banks of the Jinshui River back to his mansion, when a slightly surprised voice suddenly came from beside him. There were more young masters in the capital, and they were once again in the Ten Mile Fireworks Resort, where there were many ladies. Li Mian wouldn't assume that it was just a woman calling him a young master, an unnamed son. In. Law from the capital, who didn't have such a great reputation. However, this soft and sticky voice is quite unique and has only been heard once. No matter who, anyone who has heard this soft and sticky voice will generally remember it. Li Mian was no exception. She looked over and couldn't help but smile, it's a coincidence that you also live in Shikahai. The small window cuts winter, and the beauty is like a painting. A woman sat upright in front of a willow window, with a red wax plum painted on the window screen, adding a touch of color to the winter. Just like this woman, without any makeup, with picturesque eyebrows and eyes, she is probably the only beauty on the banks of the Jinshui River. It's like a painting of a lady. Li Mian's gaze instinctively shifted to the woman's chest, but unfortunately, she was restrained and could not see the magnificent scene of that morning. The woman noticed Li Mian's gaze, her face slightly red, and remembered the embarrassment of that morning, especially when she was in front of him during the collapse. She bounced and felt even more embarrassed in her heart. The woman gathered up her skirt, 
pressed her hands on her slender waist, and made a blessing. That day, I misunderstood the young master. Please do not blame me, young master. The round-necked robe has already been washed by hand and left to dry on the second floor. I will bring it back and return it. The woman, Dada, walked up the wooden corridor to the second floor with tightly closed window frames, took the round-necked robe that was draped in front of her that day, and walked down, extending her white lotus-like arm and handing it over. Li Mian casually took it over and smelled a faint fragrance, a fragrance of soap horn mixed with the fragrance of a woman. It must be the body fragrance of the woman in front of her. Li Mian draped a round-necked robe over her arm and chatted casually before preparing to leave. It will be a long time, and knowing the other party's residence, when riding the Wu Ming Ji back, passing by here for a casual chat will be enough. Jinu stood beside her, nervously staring at the woman in front of the waxberry window, her small face full of a guarded expression, forgetting to bite the candied fruit in her mouth. She took the initiative to say that she would listen to the music on the boat painting boat, and was convinced that the pure shepherd on the Jinshui River did not have the national beauty and heavenly fragrance of Princess Changping, and her uncle would not be moved. This woman is very different. Although she is dressed in a plain face with a cloth skirt and wooden hairpin, she is the most beautiful woman that Jinu has ever seen. The concubines in the palace are not as naturally beautiful as her. Even the seductive and despicable concubine Zheng still lacks the refined appearance of this woman. The woman covered her arms and chuckled lightly. She was really amused by the nervous and cute appearance of Jinu. When the two met for the first time, Jinu was full of vigilance towards her, and she knew why. She had already become accustomed to it. However, the demeanor of the robed young master made her feel curious, without showing any repulsive foolishness. She instinctively glanced at her chest, withdrew her gaze, and her face remained calm. The woman's smile was a bit more relaxed and natural, it seems that she did not intentionally approach her and staged a kunku opera scene that was encountered by Pujo Temple. Bring kindness to repay her, and make her promise to marry this person as a mother. What women didn't expect even more was. Li Mian didn't hesitate to leave. She chatted a few words and left a message to say goodbye before turning around and leaving. She didn't have the intention of taking the opportunity to kiss Fangza, but rather wanted to leave earlier. The woman touched her fragile face and felt strange in her heart. She couldn't help but turn pale all night. Why didn't the young master of the gift robe show any attachment? The woman saw that he was not pretending and completely let go of her guard. She took the initiative to say, I haven't asked for the name of the young master yet. Jinu clenched her little pink fist and became nervous again, muttering to herself that the woman had stopped her uncle several times. She must have been captivated by his talent, and her heart secretly agreed that she had fallen in love with him. That's right, my uncle is Jia Yuan Gong from the rural examination in northern Jili. This woman is quite discerning. Li Mian stopped without looking back and casually said, Li Mian, Li Jingguan. The woman waited for a few breaths, but never saw Li Mian actively ask her name. She covered her cherry lips and laughed, feeling that this young master named Li Mian was really a wonderful person. The woman took the initiative to speak her name confidently, My name is Qin Yuan Yuan. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Eunuch Procurement you are listening at NovelFull.Audio. Chapter 10 Eunuch Procurement Li Mian suddenly stopped in his tracks. Still not looking back, he waved his arm and gradually disappeared by the shore of Qianhai Lake in Shikahai. Shikahai is divided into Qianhai, Hohai, and Shihai. Qianhai and Hohai are divided into two at Yinding Bridge, and the Jinshui River also flows into Shikahai from Yinding Bridge. Chen Yuan Yuan's two-dot-story small building is located in Qianhai, while Li Mian's residence is built in Hohai. Compared to the bustling Qianhai, the scenery is much quieter. Most of the houses in Hohai are courtyards and mansions made of thin flower bamboo mats, with six wall doors nailed with tin-plated nails on the outside. In the large courtyard, there is also a second ceremonial door, 
decorated with brick carvings and four character banners, which looks quite imposing. The courtyards facing the street in Qianhai are mostly upper and lower bunks, with the second floor serving as a daily residence and the first floor as a storefront. Before and after the Silver Ingot Bridge, it seems like two different worlds. Li Mian returned to the mansion and did not enter the eastern room. She turned around and went to the study in the eastern corner. She casually hung her round necked robe on a painted screen and sat in front of the Huali desk. After bustling around, Ji Mu's calves flipped incessantly, pushing aside the willow trellis, and the fresh air from the warm sunny day blew in. Another Songhua glazed teapot was brought and infused with tribute tea called Zioxian Kun. It was placed on the nearby mahogany table for Li Mian to enjoy hot tea at any time. The round necked robe on the painted screen was folded and placed in the rounded cabinet. When everything was done, Jinu wiped the sweat off his forehead and sat on an embroidered mound, with his delicate white arm resting on a red incense table, holding his face and staring blankly at Li Mian who was sitting quietly reading. From time to time, I take out a preserved fruit from my embroidery bag and put it in my mouth, smiling and bending my eyes. Only half a pillar of incense time had passed, and the Ji knew couldn't bear it anymore. He started chattering and saying, Lu Jin, this dog servant, often uses excuses to evade the procurement in the mansion. These days, he has been in trouble. Several political commissioners from Jiangnan have delivered memorials to the cabinet, cursing Lu Jin for being a scoundrel. Ji Nu said these troublesome things again, which annoyed my uncle. Hong Xiao walked over with a thin bamboo basket and, according to the princess's instructions, brought Li Mian chicken and fruit as tribute from Guangdong and Guangxi, a few fresh fruits that could be eaten in winter. Princess Changping only left one to taste, and the rest were all sent to Li Mian. Lu Jin was a eunuch of the Imperial Academy and frequently went to Jiangnan for procurement supervision. It was not uncommon for him to be impeached by the Jiangnan governor. Li Mian closed the preface to Yendu prostitute products in her hand and casually responded to the words of Jinu. Hong Chiao stood in the corridor, stopped and listened to Li Mian's next words, curious about his uncle's views on this matter. Going to Jiangnan to purchase goods is the official business of the court, and Lu Jin must have done something wrong, which angered the governor. Jinu bit hard on the candied fruit and confirmed that Lu Jin had not done anything good. From his troublemaking mansion, it was clear that he was not a good person. Li Mian nodded and shook her head again. Going to Jiangnan is a matter of official business, such as purchasing daily necessities such as lamps, candles, porcelain, and satin used in the palace. However, Lu Jin and his godsons used their power for personal gain and used it to carry personal belongings. They ordered the local government office to set up Lu Jin's personal belongings outside the office. Ji Nu became enraged and bit the candied fruit even harder, seeming to mistake it for Lu Jin and bite him to death. Li Mian casually drew a map on the official blue paper, describing the procurement situation of the eunuchs in various regions, and explained it in detail and depth. Porcelain was fired at the Jiangxi provincial administration, including jade pots, spring bottles, algae plates, porcelain screens, and sacrificial vessels used in Guanglu Temple. Silk silk is produced from Jiangning weaving in southern Jili, Suzhou weaving, and Hangzhou weaving by the Zhejiang Bureau of Textile and Political Affairs, exclusively for domestic demand, with a variety of colors and patterns. Just purchasing two types of porcelain and silk, sometimes requires the local government to produce 250,000 pieces, a lot. Jinu exclaimed in surprise, thinking to himself that he could buy a lot of preserves and fill the yard with them. Red Bridge was pleasantly surprised. It seemed that uncle was truly knowledgeable and had a thorough understanding of the transportation situation. His vision was not comparable to that of ordinary scholars. The princess would be very satisfied if she found out. Uncle was a successful husband. After the local examination, the Jiren who ranked ahead of my uncle still couldn't convince him to learn more about Yuan Gong. Humph, no Jiren could match my uncle's keen insight into the officialdom. Take Qian Dongjian, 
who was supposed to be the first place Jiuan but was appointed by His Majesty to become the second place, as an example. Relying on being a disciple of Gu Xianqing, he gathered a group of scholars outside to hold an elegant collection and criticized the injustice of the court. He took away the Jia Yuan that should have belonged to him. Humph, even though he only knew how to engage in prostitution and drink all day long, he was also worthy of competing with his uncle for the village examination Jia Yuan. Li Mian picked up the Songhua glazed teapot, poured it into a Songhua glazed covered bowl, and took a sip of tea. All the procurement of eunuchs for weaving and firing, silk reeling, labor, female workers, and so on, need to be provided by the local administrative department, which occupies the silver tax of the Ministry of Revenue and the Ministry of Works. At the same time, it also affects the control of local administrative department officials over the affairs of prefectures and counties, inevitably causing a tense relationship between civil officials and eunuchs in the court. Upon hearing this, Ji Nu became confused and didn't want to disturb his uncle's conversation. He treated it like a storytelling and took out one candy after another from his embroidered bag with his tender white hands, enjoying it sweetly. She couldn't understand, watching her uncle talk confidently, with a talent for talking about the charm of playing with the moon. It was even more pleasing to the eye than the pure shepherd holding a pipa and playing peony pavilion on a boat. Pooh, how can we compare my uncle with the King Huaren by the Jinshue River? However, my uncle is really magnanimous. Ji Nu's face suddenly turned red, and he secretly glanced at Li Mian. He saw him lifting a pine flower glazed teapot and pouring tea, patting his small chest, and secretly breathed a sigh of relief. Little did anyone know that her act of patting her small chest fell into Li Mian's eyes, and she already knew that she was daydreaming again. Li Mian had long known that she had made this move, and her mind was often full of wild thoughts without explicitly stating it, so as not to let her down in the future and lose the same elegance. Hong Chiao stood at the corner of the corridor, completely stunned. The thin bamboo basket in his hand fell to the ground, but he didn't notice it. Fortunately, it wasn't the large painted golden food box that made a loud noise when it fell to the ground. Otherwise, it will disturb the master and servant in the eastern corner, leaving them with no intention of continuing. Upon hearing the situation of eunuch procurement mentioned earlier, Hong Xiao could also understand it as Li Mian's extensive reading and profound knowledge. During this period, he read many palace newspapers in the mansion and analyzed the procurement of eunuchs from the text to the lines. It's like a great Confucian commenting on the study of the mind and finding the appropriate sentence structure. The later explanation of the situation in the court is based on my uncle's unique insight, with an extremely keen eye. He has not stayed in the court before but has analyzed it thoroughly. Red Bridge has the ability to never forget, and once received praise from the empress who had not yet been deposed for being a Wantai Lonka, leaving behind a nickname of Wantai Lonka. She became serious and carefully jotted down every word that Li Mian said, returning to the embroidery room to retell it to Princess Chongping in its original form. End of this chapter